Okay, this lecture is a continuation of our talk on epithelial tissues. And so far, we have covered simple squamous epithelium here in these two boxes. We have taken a look at simple cuboidal epithelium and simple columnar epithelium. We are going to leave the simple tissues behind to now take a look at stratified tissues and this video is going to cover stratified squamous epithelium. So let's go ahead and define an epithelial tissue. An epithelial tissue is a tissue that is going to protect our body from the outside world. So it separates the inside of our body from the outside world, whether that is through our skin or through our internal body spaces. Everything we've looked at so far has lined an internal body space. Our simple squamous epithelium in our kidney made up our kidney tubules and our glomerular capsule. Our simple squamous epithelium in our blood vessels lines uh, the inside of our blood vessels. Our simple cuboidal epithelium can also line the inside of our kidneys and our ducts. And then our simple columnar epithelium was lining the inside of our digestive tract. Here with stratified squamous epithelium, remember in our red box, we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. Again, as a review, all of our simple tissues only have one layer of cells. So if we take a look at our simple squamous epithelium, here is a cell nucleus, and then our cell is squashed. Again, our nucleus, and then our cell is squashed. And we've got, only got one layer of cells there. It's really easy to see on our simple cuboidal that we have one layer of cells and on our simple columnar that we have one layer of cells. Here is a picture of stratified squamous epithelium and what we're looking at is our skin. And sometimes our skin is called a cutaneous membrane. So instead of lining a lumen, which is an internal body space, this epithelium is bordering the outside environment. And we can divide this picture up into two different segments. The segment that contains our stratified squamous epithelium is called epidermis. And then the segment made up of this lighter pink tissue, which is a kind of connective tissue, is called the dermis. So we want to be specific when we give ourselves a location and our skin is the epidermis is made out of stratified squamous epithelium. So we have that highlighted here with our orange arrows where we see our stratified squamous epithelium. And let's just do a quick breakdown of our name. Stratified, as we have been talking about it, means that there is more than one layer of cells. So our simple epithelium had one layer of cells and stratified epithelia are going to have two or more layers of cells. The word squamous means that our cells are going to be squashed and they're going to be flat and thin. And remember when we look at them from the side they can look like a fried egg. And when we look at them from the top they can also look like a fried egg. And then again, epithelium, we are bordering the outside environment. All right, let's take a look at uh, some specifics for stratified squamous epithelium. We're going to zoom in in a minute, but you can tell in this picture the cells towards the basal layer. Basal means bottom, so our basal layer is going to be bordering our next tissue which is um, a kind of connective tissue. But these cells right in here, you can see even from this magnification 
that those nuclei look pretty round. So we've got an interesting thing going on here where the cells of our basal layers are going to look cuboidal or columnar. And when we zoom in, you'll especially be able to see that it's the cells on the apical layer, which is bordering our environment. The apical layer is always going to be the layer next to the lumen. Those cells are going to have drawn out nuclei, and these are our cells that look squashed and flat. So the cells in our apical layer are going to appear to be squamous shaped. So that's a little different than what we saw in our simple tissues. For locations, we've got uh, our skin, our epidermis of the skin. And then we're also going to see stratified squamous epithelia on our tongue, lining our cheeks, which we call our oral mucosa, in our esophagus, our anal canal, and the vagina. Now, when we think of functions, we should look at how this tissue is put together. So we have all of these different layers and in many cases, the outermost layers, our apical layers, are keratinized. If we look at our skin especially, we see keratinized cells on the apical surface. So here, we see some layers that seem to be flaking away from the tissue. Those are our keratinized portions of our skin. Keratin is a protein that is very tough and very durable and not water soluble. And so it is going to protect the layers underneath from physical or chemical assault by the environment. So our stratified squamous epithelium can be said to act in protection. We can say in this protection that we are resisting abrasion which means if you scratch yourself, you're not going to scratch down through the epidermis, hopefully, and you'll just be scratching those tough keratinized layers on top. We are also going to resist penetration by pathogens, and we are resisting chemical assault. So if we think about our locations, our epidermis, tongue, oral mucosa, and esophagus, these are areas that come into contact with the outside world very, very regularly. Your clothes are rubbing against your skin. You might bump into a desk or a doorway or a tree and your skin is protecting you from damage from the outside environment. If you think about all the food that you put in your mouth, crunchy chips and they can poke you and scratch you, well, our stratified squamous epithelium takes that abuse and protects the underlying tissue from being poked and scratched and hurt. And then our anal canal, well by the time our feces make it to our anus they are somewhat dry and so they are not going to have as much lubrication as they had before. So our anal canal needs protection there as well. Same thing goes for the vagina. So hopefully you can pair the functions with the locations for stratified squamous epithelium. Here we have a close-up view of what we were just looking at. And you can see in the basal layers, our basal layers are dark like this because they contain melanocytes. So this is a very heavily pigmented skin. You can see our basal layers, our nuclei are really very round. And so that's where we see um, possibly cuboidal shaped cells. But this epithelium is named for the cells on the apical layer. And if we look at our apical layer, our nuclei are long and drawn out. Our cells are much more squished and flat. And so that is where we get our stratified squamous name. Stratified for the number of layers of cells 
and then squamous for the shape of the cell on the apical layer. Again, I want to point out that this is skin, and so we have these flaky layers here that can come off if you scratch yourself or bump into something, and they protect the layers underneath from that physical assault. This picture, on the other hand, shows us a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. This non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is more along the lines of what you'd see in your cheeks, esophagus, anal canal, and vagina. So we don't have very many flaky layers coming off the top of our apical surface as we do in our keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. But we still do have all of those layers of cells and we still see the same characteristics. Down towards the bottom our nuclei are round or a little bit columnar and then up at the top our nuclei are squashed and flat. Here again we have a comparison between our non-keratinized squamous epithelium and our keratinized squamous epithelium. Can you guess which one is which? So we have the same picture that we had on the previous page with our non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and then our new picture is keratinized. And this is very heavily keratinized. So here we see all of these layers here. Those are all dead cells. This is something that you would see on the palms of your hand or the soles of your feet. And despite the fact that we have these different keratinized options, we are still looking at the same thing, okay? So we've got this big, dark, stained area, big, dark, stained area, above a more lighter stained area. And so this is a cohesive tissue, stratified squamous epithelium, whereas everything underneath is something else. Okay? So we're looking at this nice darkly stained tissue, stratified squamous epithelium. If you get asked this on a lab practical, there will be a pointer pointing to the middle of our tissue that I am asking about. As always, if you have questions, please contact your instructor.